for Clarence Strait, issued at 3.58 a.m. Alaska Standard Time, Sunday, November 13, 2022. Today, southeast winds 20 knots. Seas 4 feet, except 8 feet near ocean entrances. Rain early in the morning. It's morning. We're in Ketchikan. We're listening to the forecast to see if we will make it to Foggy Bay and then on to Prince Rupert. Seas 5 feet. Monday night. Here is the leg from Ketchikan to Foggy Bay. This is not in the open ocean, so we are just taking a look to see what it's going to look like today. Wednesday, north wind 20 knots. It will take us approximately six hours to get to Foggy Bay. 20 knots becoming southeast. Seas four feet. As you can see, predict wind is predicting 15 to 20 knot winds against our bow the whole day. On Monday, we'll be going from Foggy Bay to Prince Rupert, which will take approximately seven, eight hours, but we'll be crossing Dixon's entrance. We are leaving in the weather that we have between Ketchum Can and Foggy Bay so that we have better weather between Foggy Bay and Prince Rupert, which is much more critical. Forecast for Dixon entrance to Cape Decision, issued at 3.39 a.m. Alaska Standard Time, Sunday, November 13, 2022. Small craft advisory through late tonight. Today, south wind 20 knots. Sea 16 feet. West swell. Tonight, southeast winds 25 knots. Seas 13 feet. West swell. Monday, southeast winds 25 knots, diminishing to 20 knots in the afternoon. Seas 12 feet. West swell. Monday night, southeast winds 20 knots. Seas 11 feet. Southwest swell. Tuesday, southeast wind 15 knots. Seas 9 feet. Wednesday, north wind 20 knots. Seas 9 feet.
two, 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 two months and a day ago, we headed to uh, Misty Fjords while everybody else was running south. And here we are. Running south <laughs> in November. It will be an adventure, though. Yes, it will. Eric says this is a dive boat. We are coming up to Walker Island and we're going to go through here and into the channel and see that that's how we've been making this run. The wind is picking up. We're up to 20 knots of winds at this point. It's not bad, but we're getting a little bit more of a rolly motion now. Um, I'm guessing it's going to get a little worse. As we predicted, it's getting a little bit more rolly. We just came around Mary's Island, Mary Island, and uh, as we predicted, it's getting a little bit more rolly. Managed to clear off this table of everything that was big and heavy. There's the Mary Island lighthouse. I go take a picture, but. I'm not stepping out there. This may not look like much, but think about how high our boat sits off the water, how high up that bow is. So when water comes over the top, it, it's because it's not a calm day. How far do we have to go? I'm not sure, I'm 10, 15 miles. So, it's 12 miles. we have 12 miles to go, that's about two hours I think, and that's where we're going, and there's other boats, I like seeing other boats, Eric says they're tugboats. Foggy Bay. It's kind of rolly, but nothing like what we have had. Feeling kind of sick. Well, we made it to Foggy Bay, and we are just now going to enter. Thank goodness we have the little lines from our routes from the last time that will help us a little. We're really glad that we came in last May because it's one last new thing for us um, as we go south during winter. What'd you think of that, Distin? A little crazy, huh? not quite as bumpy.
We are in Foggy Bay in November. Very happy to be in this nice quiet anchorage. I think now we're gonna go inside, figure out what tomorrow's gonna look like and uh, just kind of get things back together. We knew today would be uh, a potentially long day. Um, we also knew that we had to run in the generator tonight. So we planned ahead and picked up a deli pizza. So it's a quick treat. I didn't have to cook dinner, especially after a long day being bumped around. It's in the oven. Oops. When you cruise in summer in Alaska, there is no darkness. But when you cruise in winter, there is. I was posting our trip on the Facebook group site, Boating the Inside Passage. By the time that we hit Foggy Bay, I was getting quite a bit of interaction, which was wonderful because I felt like we kind of had a community behind us. We had previously done most of our planning, so we just had to verify that the weather had not changed. We watched a little TV, ate a little pizza, and just relaxed for the night knowing that we were gonna have an early morning. My morning started out with me putting on my relief band. It gives me little electrical shocks on my wrist, but it seems to work great. Eric is up there pulling the anchor. Yes, it's still dark, but uh, he likes to get early starts. And it is better to leave in the dark than to arrive in the dark, if you ask me. Especially since last time we were, uh, last time we arrived at Prince Rupert in the dark, we were uh, dodging crab buoys. Are y'all ready to go? You look like you got dragged out of bed too early. all the mud off there and, and now he's putting on the anchor block. Oh my gosh, I am so glad we have that anchor block for this trip. It has made all the difference of not worrying about that anchor banging up and down. It is just solidly tied down and it has just been, I, I don't know what would happen yesterday if we didn't have it. So I highly recommend the anchor block. And the good news is the sun is just starting to come up. That's a nice sight. Gotta make sure it's clean. They had new anchor chains, so we wanna make sure that that always gets rinsed off really, really well. A lot of mud. Mornings are the best for us. We're up, fresh, and ready to go. As you see, we can't see too much. I think I can see a little bit more than you can on the video. Look at this. The sun is just starting to rise. Isn't that pretty? Eric's got this on a pretty low light, but he's following the tracks out. And that's what makes it so we can leave in the dark. Check out this sunrise. It is gorgeous. boat out there. Look at the skies. point and I think we're officially in Dixon entrance 
I'm pretty happy. Check out this water. It's just smooth and calm. It's a beautiful day. It's so calm that Eric is even taking a nap. It's not even 10 knots of wind. And we're going eight knots. Today is a great day. Okay, we are in the middle of Dixon entrance right here. It is only 8.41 a.m. So it's a little earlier than I was thinking we'd be here. Um, but I wanted to test I wanted to compare the actuals to what we saw before we left. It's pretty calm. We have swells. Um, they are coming from the southeast, like we expected. So they're kind of hitting us from the side, but it's not bad. Here's what it looks like coming on. I'm actually driving with sunglasses on because the sun's so bright and it's coming straight at me. But I'm actually really happy with what the forecast ended up being compared with what we're really experiencing. Um, I would say that it was what we're experiencing is less than what I anticipated. Um, but again, we are getting hit with 15 knot winds just like they they said we would. I guess 15 knot winds just are not a problem in this boat. Okay, we are getting a little closer to Dundas Island here and the weather is picking up a little. It's still not horrible. Um, I have a little spray coming over the bow. Still nothing like yesterday. Hopefully it won't get that way. Okay, we're still coming up on Dundas here and we're now seeing 25 knots of wind. Eric is up, off to do an engine room check. We are getting spray over the bow. Having to push into the east a little make sure that we don't get pushed onto the island. See how I'm putting the direction farther east? Um, again, it just, I keep getting pushed west. So uh, we don't want to get too close to that point there. I'm kind of glad Eric took the nap when he did. to happen. We are now in six to eight foot seas. Okay, not so much fun. A little scary how it just kind of came out of nowhere. We we're doing all fine and then all of a sudden boom. Dundas Island now to the west of us and a couple small islands to the east of us. We're back down to 10 knots of wind. It's kind of a rolly sea so that's better. Let's cross our fingers. This sure isn't what Wendy predicted for us. It was a bit of a jolt. Life is good again. Look at that. relief. So we are coming into Prince Rupert. It's up there. We'll be going through Venn Passage. You see all the snow up there on the mountains. And just between those two islands right there, just on the other side of over there, it was just chaos. 
Maybe we'll be able to eat by dinner time. It was a shocker. And we're just coming out of Van Passage and into Prince Rupert. We are in Prince Rupert and we stay at the Prince Rupert Rowing and Yacht Club whenever we can, which has been every time. We really appreciate Kevin Mudge who runs the place. If you go to our Prince Rupert video, there's an interview with him on there. We left Boggy Bay at 6.15 a.m. and we got into Prince Rupert about 1.30, though there was a one hour time difference with the Canadian time as opposed to the Alaska time. Once we got tied up in Prince Rupert, we sat down with Kevin, had a beer, and there was another local expert there as well. And they explained what we encountered over by Dundas Island earlier. What we experienced was the wind and the current coming out of Portland Inlet. You can see that in red on this chart. It creates rough seas by Dundas Island, which is made worse with the recent rain and snow. As we got into the shallower waters, the seas got worse. The advice was to stay deep. As you can see in purple, we were getting close to Dundas Island to cut between Dundas and Green Island. Next time we'll stay deep and not go between the islands. If it's really bad, the suggestion is to travel on the west side of Dundas Island. We really enjoy Prince Rupert, so we stayed an extra day and we went up to the Breakers Pub and had a really nice dinner. If you are enjoying this journey, please hit subscribe and follow along on our next leg of this adventure. Have a see you next time.